friends and welcome to the data structures so today we would be covering something known as a doubly linked list but before we dive into the depths of what is a doubly linked list first i would like to cover a few basics of what is a linked list so a linked list in simple terms is a linear collection of data elements these data elements are called nodes linked list is a data structure which in turn can be used to implement other types of data structures as well the proper basics of linked list as well as the different types of linked list i have already covered in my previous videos there is a link in the description below as well as there is a floating link on your screen above you can click any of the two to be redirected to my previous videos now we would be starting what is a doubly linked list so a doubly linked list contains two pointers namely the forward pointer which points to the next node in the linked list and the backward pointer which points to the previous node in the linked list now remember a doubly linked list can be traversed in both the directions that is in the forward direction as well as the reverse direction so this is the basic structure of how a doubly linked list looks like each node in the linked list except the first and the last node contains two pointers which points to the next node and the previous node in the linked list also the previous pointer of the first node in the linked list always contains a null pointer and the last node in the linked list always has its next node pointer as null So now let's begin with the basic operations in a doubly linked list. So first we'll begin by what is known as a push operation or inserting a new node in a doubly linked list. So first we'll begin by inserting a node between two nodes in an already existing linked list. So we'll be using the following linked list for our example. The linked list contains five nodes already present namely node A, B, C, D and E. Now the new node Z will be inserted between the nodes B and C in the already existing linked list. Now remember whenever a new node is created both its pointers are already null pointers since it is a newly created node it does not contain any addresses for its pointers. So now let's begin with the insertion. So first we'll change the backward pointer of node Z to point to node B in the linked list since now it would be inserted between the nodes B and C and B would be its previous node. Hence we'll change the previous pointer of node Z to point to node B in the linked list. Next will change the forward pointer node B to point to node Z rather than node C as it was earlier pointing since now node Z will be the next pointer for node B in the linked list. Now we will change the forward pointer node Z to point to node C in the linked list since now node C will be the forward node or the next node for node Z in the linked list. Lastly we will change the backward pointer of node C to point to node Z in the linked list. Since now node Z will be before node C in the linked list rather than node B as it was before insertion. And this is how finally the linked list should look like. Node Z has been inserted between the nodes B and C and all the pointers have been properly arranged. Next we will begin by insertion at the beginning of a linked list. So here is our linked list and we will be inserting the node Z before node A in the linked list. As I have stated since node Z is a newly created node in the linked list it will always have both its pointers set to null. So now let's begin with the insertion. So the first step is to change the forward pointer of node Z to point to the first node of the linked list that is node A. Since now node A will become the second node and node Z will be the first node so the next pointer of node Z should point to the node A in the linked list. And this is how it looks like after we change the pointer of node Z so that the forward pointer points to the node A in the linked list. Also always remember since node A initially had its backward pointer set to null now we need to change the null pointer to point to the new node Z in the linked list. So here it is we have changed the node or the backward pointer of node A to point to the new node Z in the linked list. And last step for the same is to change the start pointer to point to the new node Z in the linked list. Since node Z will now be the starting of the linked list. So here it is we have changed the start pointer to point to the node Z in the linked list. And finally this is how the newly created linked list should look like where node Z has been inserted between the start pointer and node A to be the first node in the linked list. Lastly, we will begin by inserting a node at the end of a linked list and this is by far the easiest way to insert a new node in the linked list. So let's begin. Now we will be inserting the node Z at the end of a linked list. So the first step is to make sure the backward pointer of node Z points to the last node of the linked list that is node E. And here it is we have made sure 
the backward pointer of node Z now points to node E in the linked list. The next step is to change the next pointer of node E, which was initially null pointer, to point to the newly created node Z. So here it is, we have made sure the next pointer node E now points to node Z in the linked list. And this is how the finally linked list should look like after node Z has been inserted at the end of the linked list. Now we would begin with the pop operation that is deleting a node in a doubly linked list. So let's begin with deletion between two nodes or we do deleting an already present node between two nodes in a linked list. So we would be using the same linked list from a previous example where we had already inserted a node Z between the nodes B and C. So let's delete the node node Z that is already present between the nodes B and C. So the first step is to make sure that the forward pointer of node B now directly points to the node C instead of node Z. This is done by simply copying the forward pointer of node Z into the forward pointer of node B where the address of node C is now copied to the forward pointer of node B. So here it is, we have made sure the forward pointer of node B now points to the node C in the linked list. Next we need to change the backward pointer of node C to point to node B in the linked list. This is again done by copying the address present in the backward pointer of node Z into the backward pointer of node C. So here it is, we have configured the same and this is how the linked list should look like after we have configured these pointers. You can simply delete the present node Z to make sure that it has been deleted between the nodes B and C. Now if you would be thinking of how the node has been deleted, so if you would be using an object oriented programming language such as Java. It will automatically delete the node during garbage collection. However, if you are using a language such as C, which is a procedure oriented language, so you will need to delete the node manually. So this is how the linked list should look like after the node Z has been deleted. The node B and C now point properly to each other. The next part would be deleting a node at the beginning of a linked list. The first step for deleting a node at the beginning of a linked list is to make sure that the start pointer now directly points to node A instead of the node Z. Since now node A would be the starting or the beginning of the linked list. So here it is, we have changed the start pointer to directly point to node A in the linked list. This is again done by simply copying the address present in the forward pointer of node Z into the start pointer. Now also make sure that the previous pointer of node A is turned into a null pointer since now it is the beginning of the linked list and the first node in a linked list always has its backward pointer set to null. So this is of utmost importance and make sure you always set the backward pointer of node A or the first node in the linked list to null pointer. And so this is how the linked list should look like after the beginning node or the starting node Z is deleted from the linked list. The start pointer now directly points to node A which is the first node in the linked list and the backward pointer of node A which was initially pointing to node Z has become a null pointer since it is now the beginning of the linked list. Now the last is deletion at the end of a linked list. This is the easiest way to delete a node from a linked list. So again we will be using the same linked list where we had inserted a node Z at the end of a linked list. I will again delete this node Z from the existing linked list. So only one thing needs to be done, you need to make sure that you change the next pointer of node E into a null pointer. And this is how the linked list should look like after the deletion of node Z. As I have stated regarding garbage collection, the node would be automatically deleted. And this is how the final linked list should look like after node Z has been deleted. Now before ending this video, there are a few important points that I would like to specify. First is do verify the way you are changing pointers when inserting a new node or deleting a node. If you change the pointers in the wrong way as I have stated the entire linked list may be lost. That is because if you change a pointer in the wrong way and make it point directly to the next node in the linked list or a previous node in the linked list, the entire linked list of the next or previous positions might be deleted forever and there is no way to recover the linked list. So make sure you always change the pointers in the correct way and you do not lose any of your data in the linked list. Thank you, please do like, share and subscribe if you have enjoyed watching the video. Also these are a few of the other videos from my channel, you can watch these as well and solve all your doubts and queries regarding data structures. As of this video, if you do have any queries, please do post in the comment section below and I would be ha very happy to solve your queries.